This is a couple of days later, and uh, as you can see, uh, all the hoses are gone, and uh, it's good enough to be 3D scanned. It's not exactly clean, but I've done the best I could, given the time and uh, materials I have. Uh, this is a wooden plate, yes, I can confirm that it's wood. Uh, I am going to remove it later, no time for that now. And uh, removing the aluminum plate was the hardest part because, uh, well, it was really glassed to the hull. As you can see, even after cutting off the, uh, the fiberglass, there's still a quarter of an inch of fiberglass just holding that thing. Uh, I'll remove it later, I just don't have proper tools and I don't have time and I don't want to risk damaging the shell by removing too much fiberglass, so I'll do it later uh, when I reinstall the motor or when I decide to uh, improve some of the uh, looks in here, but for now that should do it. I have enough room for the motor and I have uh, everything out of the way so I'll be able to scan this bilge and most importantly uh, this shaft and uh, let's go into my computer and I'll show you what I'm planning to do. So this is the motor that I'm going to be mounting and when you buy it it comes with brackets they ask you the dimensions so you tell them uh, how long how wide and uh, I had to cut them a little bit why because the uh, the bilge the hatch on top of the bilge, it's only 34 centimeters wide. Uh, in order to lower it, I had to cut it like this much. So even the supports will barely fit through that hatch. So not a lot of space, but uh, it should fit in. So uh, they send you engine mounts, they send you these uh, brackets, uh, they are stainless steel. And uh, I had to uh, get creative and uh, I came up with these rails. So this is going to be uh, just you know, acting as a support platform for the engine mounts. I, I need to bolt them down somehow, right? So uh, it also will help me to uh, move the motor, uh, to couple it to the uh, prop shaft. So the bow is that direction, the stern is this direction. And uh, uh, these black things, uh, this is what I'm going to 3D print. So the plan is to uh, go and, uh, uh, and scan the bilge. Uh, once it's scanned, I'll know uh, how much to print. So essentially, I'll find the difference between these blocks, these supports, and the shape of the bilge. And uh, I'll be able to align this motor and the whole assembly uh, to the shaft. So the shaft uh, that sticks out of my uh, uh, stuffing box, out of that uh, little bearing, that holds it in place, prevents it from falling out of the boat. So th th that, that shaft that piece is the most important part in this whole operation because uh, this this motor this sh this shaft needs to be aligned perfectly with that one and uh, th this is um, just you know to be able to to hold the motor in place uh, so that it doesn't fall down and um, uh, interestingly I have so little space that uh, original uh, the original bracket it came with um, the uh, the corners that were sticking out of the motor, so I had to detach it from the motor and grind it down uh, to just make sure that it fits into the bilge. And uh, once it's scanned, I'm gonna do this and you know, uh, give it whatever height I need to just make sure that um, this uh, goes all the way down and points into the belch. And uh, after it's printed and glued to the belch, I'm going to glass it over. Uh, I've allowed two millimeters of extra spacing uh, between the rails and uh, these supports and uh, these are going to be made out of aluminum. Uh, this is just to make sure that the rails are attached to the supports. 
and after that uh, the motor is going to be lowered down uh, just a little bit using the motor mounts and then coupled to the prop shaft. So yeah, uh, the next step is to scan, add that scan to, to this uh, software and find the difference between the shape of the bilge and the supports and you know like move these things like the rails, the, uh, the engine mounts up and down a little bit just to find the perfect uh, size for these and uh, position, distance, vertical distance between the rails and the shaft. Uh, let's go back into the bilge. Uh, this is my coupling and uh, this side goes to the motor and uh, there's a bolt. Uh, it uh, just secures it to the motor on uh, uh, one side and on the other one uh, this is how you clamp it onto, the, onto that shaft. Uh, I've messed up a little bit. Uh, I thought it was 30 millimeters. It turned out it to be one inch and one eighth, so that's on me. But it's okay. It's close enough. I could always uh, add some uh, kind of a, I don't know, uh, maybe fiberglass. Uh, I don't know. I, I can always put something in between and uh, just to make sure that for now I can use it. Uh, anyway, uh, and also that shaft turned out to be keyed. So once again. I've messed up, but uh, either way, without the key, the key is detachable, so uh, I should be able to attach this and secure it properly. If not, I'll make a new coupling. Not a big deal. So um, these things, uh, that is my pride and joy. Uh, it says 50, 65, 70. Uh, what it means is how much that shaft is gonna go inside of this coupling. So 70 goes 70, 65, and then 50 goes 50. Uh, this is to help me with my alignment adventures. And let me show you uh, what exactly it does. So when we're talking 50, uh, that bottom is 50 millimeters deep. So that's pretty much just the depth of the bottom, but the height is all the same. Why? I'll show you why. So 50, you can put on, and uh, you see there's a lot, a lot of shaft left, and uh, it's just not enough. Because uh, look, so 50, it's about like, two bolts. I have three bolts, and uh, I'd rather you know grab as much of that shaft as possible, and also be uh, as close as possible to my motor once again. Very limited real estate in this build, so uh, gotta be generous. This is 70, and uh, 70 turned out to be too much. I uh, kind of messed up, but I used it to protect my shaft while I was removing the brackets, so it kind of served a good purpose. So uh, 70 is not enough. I mean, too much, because uh, 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 I wouldn't be able to move it away if this thing is this long i would have to just cut it at that point if i if i mount my motor too close to that bearing to the end of the shaft that sticks out uh then uh it's just not gonna fit in i would have to like somehow move my motor uh uh towards the bow and um we don't want that so, uh, the best uh, depth that I've managed to discover turns out to be 65. I could do 66, 67, I don't want to because, you know, what if I miscalculate something and mess up something somewhere. I don't want to, you know, be too close to the bearing. So, uh, 65 goes this much. And there's like a three, three and a half millimeters of space, which is fine. Uh, that's as much as I want it to be. And uh, this thing, it has the same diameter outside as the shaft of the motor. That means when I put this thing on, uh, this bottom tells me where the motor begins because uh, the, uh, the space between the end of this shaft and uh, the motor shaft is about this much. 
and that corresponds to the space where the shaft mounts on the bottom uh, of that side and uh, it accounts for the thickness of the midsection and the distance to the end uh, to the beginning of the shaft that goes from this side so 65 then uh, the distance to the midsection plus the midsection and uh, that's where the motor uh, shaft is so we're talking about 65 plus something and guess what this is why they're all the same height but they have different depth because this height corresponds exactly to the uh, to the space that can take the um, uh, the prop shaft plus the um, the metal plate so it's this much so this essentially uh, will help me not only cover the shiny surface hence 3d scanning but also on the scan I will use this as my uh, I guess Y plane this is Z this is X this is Y and I'll be able to use these two points this and this to align the bilge uh, on the y-axis on the x-axis I guess uh, the best I can do is just use this plate maybe the leftovers of that one maybe the water tank I don't know uh, how do you find it you know how, how do you find out the horizontal plane on a boat it's all relative it's always moving uh, so uh, that's something that's never gonna be precise but it doesn't matter too much I'll do my best but once again uh, what can I do? Uh, maybe when it's you know, on the hard, I'll be able to completely align the boat horizontally and then use some kind of a digital level to tell me exactly where the horizontal plane is. Uh, but that's later. It, it, it's not going to affect things much, uh, if at all. So anyway, um, so once it's scanned like this, uh, the scan is going to tell me, okay, uh, this is the beginning of your motor shaft and it's the same exact thickness as the motor shaft so align the motor bump it into this uh, in shape script align the shaft of the motor and everything uh, relative to these points so this is my uh, horizontal plane I guess well um, vertical y y axis uh, and um, uh, that should pretty much help me determine where to put the supports in this bilge. Uh, that's the plan, because uh, aligning those two shafts, that's the goal. The supports, their location, their position, orientation, all that, that comes from aligning this to the motor. That's number one. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna prepare this for getting the radius canned, uh, cover everything shiny with something like this. Uh, I'll do a couple of passes and it needs to be a very good scan because uh, there'll be like a week of work just mounting and glassing those things and I really don't want to mess up. So uh, yeah, uh, there's going to be a lot of work but uh, once it's done I'll be able to finally uh, use my motor to, uh, to drive this shaft and, and the prop. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much the plan. Uh, I'll double check everything and uh, continue with the uh, scanning and printing. And uh, this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing for hours and hours. Uh, the positioning targets are on and it's going to be a lot of scanning. But eventually uh, I'll be able to, uh, to have the model still scanning. Uh, going good so far. It's been like 20 minutes maybe. Uh, so far I have this, which is not bad. Uh, so, shut the fuck up. Uh, so the green areas, they uh, indicate that the scan has a lot of data points and uh, it's gonna be very precise. Uh, red areas, 
uh, means very little data points, very few. So I need to go over those areas once again so that it's more precise. And um, that's what it looks like. And uh, later I'll make a model out of this and uh, we'll be uh, working on, uh, on uh, modifying the supports. So this is the scan and um, the good news is that the motor, it fits into the bilge and uh, that means my calculations and measurements, they were correct. And uh, that is amazing news. Uh, um, one little problem is that uh, the bilge is too narrow uh, on this side. Uh, and that's okay. Um, not a huge deal. So either I'm gonna just make this rail a little shorter uh, or I'll just uh, do some magic with the, with the brackets here because uh, the two brackets that attached to this support uh, they're just you know they're not really um, gonna fit uh, everywhere else it fits so there's plenty of room here uh, and of course uh, much more room uh, where the wires are um, anyway, so I'm going to make another scan because this is a, just a pretty bad low quality scan that I uh, kind of did just to make sure that uh, everything's going to fit. Uh, once the once this scan is in place, I'll uh, I'll know exactly what to 3D print. So this red highlighted area, that's what's going to be printed. The rest of it is going to be discarded, of course. And then uh, these things will be glued, glassed, and then um, the rails will be attached to them. And then the motor is going to be lowered uh, along with the supports, oh, sorry, with the engine mounts. So, uh, and then coupled, coupled with the coupling. Yep, uh, so that's the plan. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, see you soon.